Welcome back to Dan Rocket Science. I'm Adam Balkin. Over the years, South by Southwest has become a hub for innovation where thinkers and tinkers from across the globe gather to share their ideas. Back on the East Coast, though, some high school students are showcasing some innovations of their own and competing for serious cash prizes. Our Tyrolyn Wagner gets the 30 second pitch from finalists in the Intel Science Talent Search. This is the Olympics of high school science fairs, but in this competition, rather than going for the gold, these student scientists are competing for over $1 million in cash prizes. The Intel Science Talent Search brings the nation's top young thinkers to the National Geographic Society in D.C. Projects run the gamut of innovative thinking, everything from battling drug-resistant pneumonia. My project was to find two possible therapeutic drugs to combat this bacteria to the composition of cement and its use in oil rigs. The project is the radiological characterization of adipolgite nanoclay modified cement slurries for oil well cementing applications. Augusta was driven by the desire to make a mark on the world in an environmentally stable way. Her teacher Michelle Flannery was at the fair to cheer her on and noted the importance of mentorship for these STEM all-stars. I think you have a super capable and super talented group here, and but I do think it's important that they have people in their lives that can help them understand how to direct their energy towards the pursuit of this excellent work. For these students to be able to showcase their projects and be able to really tell their stories of their research, get other people inspired, right? You're building a community. This is the 75th year for the Science Talent Search, a program by the Society for Science and the Public. For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Tara Lynn Wagner. A good mentor can be a priceless resource, but nothing beats good old-fashioned hands-on learning. In Harlem, New York, students are getting a crash course in triage care. Aaron Billups joins them as they take a look at what keeps an emergency room running smoothly. It isn't quite life or death, but these high school students are learning about what it takes to care for people with urgent medical needs. MedAchieve is a special high school program that brings high school students on a weekly basis to interact with our first and second year students. They come, they learn, they interact. The Toro College MedAchieve program helps students interested in pursuing a career in medicine get a jump start on their education. These teens from local schools in New York City's Harlem neighborhood get to participate in the actual training exercises emergency room doctors practice while in med school. The simulations here mimic real life medical emergencies, everything from birth to what to do if a patient is unable to breathe. I like um, visiting the lab where I got to hear different heartbeats and stuff like that. I like seeing all the simulators and actually like getting to touch the, the bodies and stuff. And what's in store for these teens? When I grow up, I want to be either a cardiologist or a surgeon. I know. In the future, I'm going to be an orthopedic surgeon. I know I want to stick to the medical field. I really like helping people, you know, and um, actually like learning, like to take care of people. It's really like something that I really want to do. The program complements the students' high school curriculum and aims to prepare them for a future using science to save lives. For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Erin Billups. And knowledge of the human body can come in handy outside of the ER as well. A group of art students are using their knowledge of anatomy to help solve cold case crimes. Sound like something out of a crime TV show? Our Stephanie Simon shows us how it's done. These art students aren't just sculpting, they're helping to solve cold cases. At this recent week-long workshop, New York Academy of Art students and teachers learned forensic sculpture. We have uh, art students being trained in the science and art of creating reconstructions from skeletonized remains that have been found uh, to try and give them identities, give them a face. In the hit police drama Cold Case, fresh eyes and new technology helped solve old cases. This too is meant to identify these victims, the first step in closing these cases. It's a collaboration between the Academy, the New York City Medical Examiner's Office, and forensic artist Joe Mullins of the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. 
The process begins with a 3D printout of a real skull. Anything that's unique about this individual, like everything about the features on your face is etched into your skull. So every skull is just as unique as a face. The straws are the averages for the age range and ancestry of this individual for the how thick the tissue is. You might think they just sculpt big gobs of clay until they create a face, but that's not how sculpture is taught here. So here we have an example of the somewhat lost art of écorché. So écorché translates to flayed person. It's a construction, it's a sculptural interpretation of human anatomy. Recreating the face and body from the inside out. Bone, then tissue and muscle, then skin. Last year, an unknown man was identified after his family saw the finished clay bust by Marco Pali. We are the last resource to, to kind of identify these people. Not all of these cold cases are necessarily crime victims. Some may have died of natural causes without their family knowing what happened to them. But each is still a mystery to be solved. For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Stephanie Simon. And those sculpting sleuths aren't alone in wanting to crack crimes. Lisa Pappas caught up with students preparing for the North Carolina Science Olympiad, where one student's using chemistry in her own mock crime scene investigation. Roshni Gowri Shankar looks forward to her Science Olympiad club meetings every Monday after school. I really like it. In my club, I, I get to test things. I get to test powders and crystals. Right now, she's learning how to solve crimes by mixing solutions and testing pH levels. You have to cut part of the nose, and then you have to dip it in alcohol, and then it will change color. And you have to use your other pens or markers to see if it matches with that. Her classmates are busy with other projects, from building pasta towers to hold weight, to testing rockets and even roller coasters. When we go to the tournament, we will have to see what roller coaster will last the longest. These students are putting their science, technology, engineering and math skills to the test, getting ready to compete with other schools this spring. But it's not just about the Science Olympiad. We as a country need these STEM type careers and it has to start at an earlier age. But Gary Shankar already knows this club will help her in the future. I want to be a gynecologist when I grow up. It's also part of science and math. Working towards her dream job one experiment at a time. For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Lisa Pappas. All right, we should stop for one more quick break, then coming up. We'll check out how science, technology, engineering, and math play a role on stage and screen, and then we meet up with some students taking their love for drones to all new heights, all with hopes to do some serious good in their community. To find hands-on science, technology, engineering, and math opportunities in your community, visit the connectory.org, made possible by Time Warner Cable's Connect a Million Minds.